So at least as the story goes, the reason why people thought Socrates was so wise was because he, maybe more than anybody, acknowledged how little he actually knew. And that's, that's a concept that is very near and dear to me. I find it super profound. I find it very much guides a lot of how I live. This, this humility, this awareness of how limited our knowledge is, of how unsure and uncertain we can ever be about anything in life. And Socrates appeared to be an individual who embodied that maybe more than anybody else. And for many people, again, they believe that's, that's what is true wisdom. That's what made him wiser than, than anybody else. Not because he actually had more knowledge, but ironically because he was aware of how little knowledge he actually had. And implicit in that concept is, that, is the idea that if you don't, if you're not aware of how limited your knowledge is, if you have a false confidence in how much you actually know, if, you're, if, if you don't acknowledge how limited you are, that's a problem. That's worse off. Socrates was better off than that individual. And intuitively, we can kind of grasp that, and it, and it makes sense to an extent. I mean, it's a little bit of a funky thing to think about at first, that the wisest person is the one that can acknowledge how little they know. But once you get over that hump, you can kind of understand the, the false confidence the, the not questioning yourself, not challenging yourself. It can lead you to make decisions, to take actions that lead to bad outcomes that perhaps aren't the right or best actions to take in that moment because you have this false confidence. Um, the idea being that the more you question, the more you challenge, the more you'll learn, the more you'll realize that you don't really know. And that's better for you, having that, that awareness. What I found myself thinking today, though, was if you really press on that in the spirit of Socrates, why? Why would somebody be worse off thinking they know things they don't versus somebody else who just is aware that they don't know those things? At, at, at the root of both of those are two individuals that don't know. In one case, somebody thinks they do and they take actions accordingly. In the other one, somebody's aware they don't and takes actions accordingly, seemingly. But in both, you don't actually know. So, like, use an example, right? Let's say somebody says, I want to be the best dad I could be. That's my goal. What I'm aiming towards is to be a great dad. Um, and in one situation, you have an individual who thinks the way they're approaching being a dad, the actions they're taking, the values they're instilling, the lessons they're teaching, the philosophy, all of it. They think they've got it. Like, I know exactly how to do this. And they follow that approach. Then you have somebody on the other side who's very aware of the idea that I don't actually know how to be a great dad. I'm not sure what I should do. I'm not sure what the right values are, what the lessons are, what approach to take to it. I, I don't know. You take those two individuals and you say, okay, I see they're different, but why is one better? And let's play it out because I, I honestly am not sure. <laughs> in the one hand, you're going to have somebody who is very has strong conviction and confidence in the approach they're taking, and they're going to take actions according to that. They're going to raise their child a certain way. It could be whatever it is, right? Maybe they're very disciplined, or maybe they're very open-minded and like to talk through a lot of things. Whatever their approach is, they feel very confident that that's the right approach, and they go with that, and they take it. Now, let's assume in this scenario, because that person is falsely confident, they don't actually know, it leads to issues and frictions, and there's times in which it goes wrong and breaks bad, and being that disciplined or whatever it might be doesn't actually result in the outcome they want. Maybe their child's upset. Maybe their child, um, they don't have a good relationship. All these different things. And you say, okay, so that's that's a problem. If, if they were aware of what they didn't know, maybe they could adjust more. Maybe they could try different things, right? So you switch to the other person who's aware that they don't know. And you say, well, that person's got it because they don't know the right approach to being a great dad. So they're going to try things. And they're going to try and they're going to learn from it. But this concept, this concept that the reason why Socrates was so wise is because he did not know. Implicit in that is, is this sense of like, even as you question, you're still not actually gaining more knowledge. You're just seeing how little knowledge you actually have. So back to the example in the Socrates dad who doesn't know and is aware of it, they're trying different things. They try discipline. They try being more lax. They try being very open-minded. They try... Um, letting the child direct, they, all different things. As they go through that, because they still don't know, likely they're still going to run into issues. 
and they're going to learn from some of it, right? But they still don't know. And even as they try things out, we don't actually get to a greater state of knowledge because as with Socrates, at the end of it, you still don't know. That's the only thing you could know is that I'm, I'm actually not sure. So in both these cases, it would seem like both of them aren't any better suited to be a dad. In one, it's a little more straight line, straightforward. I think I know I'm just going to take this approach and when it breaks bad, it breaks bad. And maybe sometimes it goes well, but I just keep on the path. In the other one, you're willing to maybe try a lot of different things. You're very humble. You're very, uh, you challenge yourself. You question yourself. Is this the right approach? Is that the right approach? But there's no answer. <laughs> That's the issue. That's the point I keep running into. If there's no right answer, if we never know, knowing just means we know we don't know, then how is that more beneficial? How does that get us to a better place? There's no final destination. There's no right way of doing it that we can hang our hat on, that we can say that Socrates' parent is more likely to get there quicker. Because Socrates' whole game was, I don't know. I just don't know. And that's tricky. It's, 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 how do you reconcile that? How do you make sense of that? For someone like me, again, who is very much a fan of the Socratic approach, who believes we all need to question ourselves more and challenge ourselves more. What's underpinning that? If the assumption at the end of the day is it's still not going to get you to, to knowledge, it's still not going to get you to a quote-unquote right answer, then how is that person better off? How does it work better for them? I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I think most people would go back to the idea that being aware that you don't know allows you to adjust more. And I think that's true, but I think we have to acknowledge that if we say that, there's an assumption that that adjustment is going to allow you to get smarter and get to a, a place where you do actually have more knowledge, where you are better positioned to be a dad than this person who just thinks they know all the answers. And I'm not sure that those things reconcile. I'm not sure that the underlying concept that Socrates was bringing forth, at least as I understand it, and I could be totally wrong, is that there isn't really knowledge there's too much there's too much unknown it's infinite variables there's too much we don't know it's too complex for us to ever have a true understanding of it and if that's the case what's the benefit what's the benefit maybe it moves us just closer towards something but how are we measuring it if the goal was i want to be the best dad right that's the goal we stated well how do we define being the best dad how would we, like, if there's no right answer of how to be the best dad, then whether I just try one approach and fail, you know, with that approach, or I try a hundred approaches and still fail because there's not a right answer to be learned, how am I better off? I really don't know. The thing I think about often is, and, and I'm not sure how this weaves together, but like uh, suffering, unnecessary suffering. Is it, is it more likely that the person with the false confidence that thinks they know is going to cause more unnecessary suffering? I don't know that I see that when you work out the math of it, the figurative math of it. I could see why that person might cause suffering because they think they know and they're just steamrolling ahead. But this person doesn't know either. So they're trying different things. You could get to the same level of suffering. Does it come back to the idea of, of what I often call goodness? That the only thing that we know for sure or the only thing, the thing that's most tangible to us is we know when something feels good for us. And maybe when you pair that concept of, of that goodness, that tangible goodness that we can feel for ourselves with the Socratic approach, maybe that's the magic sauce. Because maybe the goal isn't actually to be the best dad or maybe those are like secondary, but really we just want that feeling of goodness. And for some of us, feeling like a good dad brings that feeling of goodness. For other people, it's building a business. It's, you know, whatever you want to be. If you know that's what you're striving towards, I want to feel good. And then you pair that with the Socratic approach, which says, I don't exactly know how to feel good. I'm not going to make pretend I have the answer to that question. I'm going to acknowledge the fact that I'm not exactly sure how to get there. So now when I'm trying different things out, at least there's a frame of reference that we can ground ourselves in. That when I try this different approach, does it make me feel good? Does it not? Why does it make me feel good? Is it a true goodness? Or is it at the expense of somebody else? Maybe it allows you to hone in on actually that true feeling of goodness where you can feel it at its, at its optimal state. Whereas that parent that's just, this is it, this is the way I know I have it, they're never questioning. They don't know that feeling of goodness. I don't know. It gets really, 
convoluted and messy, gets very self-involved. It gets very selfish, this, this inherent internal feeling of goodness being our guide. And, and maybe that's, again, that's the pairing and why it's so important, because if our only true guide is what makes us feel good, we need to force ourselves to not be blindly carried along by that. We're going to be carried along by it, but our only defense to protect ourselves, you know, from, from shooting up heroin and just being like, well, that feels good, I'm going to do it till I die, or hurting other people, right, so that we can feel good, the only thing that protects us from that is questioning, is challenging, is the humility and being aware of, I actually don't know this for sure. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a really interesting question. Why are we better off knowing we don't know?